This training video is brought to you by K Alliance. K Alliance provides high quality instructor led training videos for desktop, IT, and soft skills. Visit us online at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free seven day trial. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching, and we hope you learned something new. Real videos, real learning, real success. In database design, there are times when you want control over what happens inside of the database, and some of that control is consistency. You want consistent data entered in your database, and that's where referential integrity comes in. I'm going to take you into a relationship window and talk a little bit about how referential integrity will affect your database. Okay, so we're going to click on Database Tools and Relationships. And there are no relationships built yet, so I'm simply going to right click and select Show Table. I want the Employees Table to be available, the Expense Payments, and the Projects. I want all three of those. So I'm going to go ahead and say Close. And now those are my three tables that I want to work with. While I'm building relationships, it's just a typical relationship building. From the employees table, I want to connect it to the expenses table. So I grab employee and I drop it off on employee ID. Exactly the same as you've always built a relationship. Here's the only difference. This time, instead of just saying create and jumping out, we're going to enforce referential integrity. Now, when you have enforce referential integrity, you have these other features that pop up. But right now, we're just going to enforce referential integrity. We'll come back and talk about those other features. And then I'm going to go ahead and say create. Oh, relationships must be on the same number of fields with the same data type. So what it's telling me here is I broke one of the rules. Remember, rules for building relationships say the same field must exist in both tables, the same data type, the same field size, and the same input mask. So I've made a mistake here. And you see, it will not allow me to enforce referential integrity if I have a problem with the data types. Let me say OK to that. We'll see what happens if we turn off enforce referential integrity. You see how it allows me to build the relationship? So sometimes enforcing referential integrity is going to also catch the mistakes that you've made. Well, let's go fix that. So I'll click on the line there and hit delete. Yes, I want to permanently delete that. Let's go to Employees Design View, and Employee ID is a number field. Let's close that. So on the Expense Payments Design View, Employee ID has to be a number field. So let's change this. Now, remember, when you're designing your database, you haven't entered data into the database yet, so you don't have to worry about messing up, because there is no data to mess up. Right? So we'll hit Save. We'll go ahead and close that. Now, let's see what happens when I try to build a relationship between employees and their expense payments. I click Employee ID. I drag down to Employee ID. I enforce Referential Integrity. Click on Create. So sure, you can create that because you followed the rules. You had the same field in both tables, the Employee ID field, with the same data type, the same field size, and the same input mask. And now I have little indicators here telling me that I've enforced Referential Integrity. The one, two, mini. That's a type of relationship. It simply says that on the employees table, employees can only show up one time, which you know that because primary key fields cannot have repetitive information. So employees can show up one time on the employee ID table, but employees can show up many times on the expense payments table. So that's a one to many relationship, and referential integrity has been enforced. All right, so I did, a, I did one with a mistake. Let me just drag this over here. I want you to see that the line goes with me because it's connected, and visually it continues to show you that there's a connection between the tables. Now, let's relate employees and their projects. So I'm going to grab employees and drag it down. The same field must exist in both tables, right? Employee ID. Let's enforce referential integrity. And this time, let's also turn on the cascade. Let's look at the cascade features. So cascade update and cascade delete. They do exactly what they sound like. Updating, if you change information on the primary table, it'll change the information on the foreign table. Delete, if you delete information on the primary table, it will delete information on the foreign table. Or the parent table and the child table, sometimes people say. Different terminology is used. But basically, 
the cascade starts with the table that has the primary key and flows to the other table. Let's go ahead and say create. And we don't have any mistakes here. And so we don't have to worry about building the relationship and enforcing referential integrity. So now, here's what referential integrity says. It says that the same information must exist on both of these tables. So the employees table and the project table concerning the employee ID field, I can't, I can't put something on the projects table that doesn't already exist in the employees table. So let's go take a look at this. Let me open up projects. So I'm simply going, let's just double click here to open projects. And you can see that a few employees have been assigned projects. Well, we don't know how many employees there are unless we look at the employees table. So let's also open up employees. And you can see this is, these are very short and simple tables. I don't want to spend time typing. My goal here is to talk about the concept of establishing referential integrity. So we're not even all that concerned with the content of these tables. What we're concerned with is how the referential integrity is behaving. So you can see I only have three employees, employee one, employee two, and employee three. So let's get back to the projects table. And on the projects table, I'm going to go ahead and enter employee four. And their project is 22. And what they're working on here is, uh, let's just make catering their project. And I'll hit tab to move forward. And it says, you can't. You cannot add or change a record because a related record is required in the table employees. I cannot assign a project to an employee that hasn't been hired yet. You see, I don't have an employee number four. I only had three employees. So I'm not allowed, because of referential integrity, I'm not allowed to place an employee on the project's table that already does not exist on the employee's table. So all I can do is say OK to that, hit Escape to erase it, because that employee doesn't exist. I would first have to put the employee into the employee table in order to assign a project to that employee. That's referential integrity. What exists on one table, the parent table, must also exist on the child table. And if it doesn't, Access just won't let you do it. That's all there is to it. Now let's talk about the cascade update and the cascade delete. Let's go to the employee table. The update and delete is only effective on the primary key field. So let's assume that, oops, that wasn't supposed to be employee number one. That was that employee's number was 100. I, I just made a little mistake there. And so we'll go ahead and change the employee ID to 100. What you have on one table must exactly match the other table. And we said cascade update will be enforced. So when I go to the projects table, look what happened to employee number one. Employee number one is no longer number one, it's number 100, because the same information must exist on both tables, and Cascade Update simply lets it flow over into the other table. Well, Cascade Delete is the same. You can see employee number three has three um, projects assigned to that person. Let's go over to employee number three, and employee number three, mm, sorry, no longer works here. So we'll just right click, and we'll delete that record. And it says, hey, wait a second. Relationships that specify cascading deletes are about to cause one record in this table along with related records in related tables to be deleted. So it's warning me. It's letting me know that if I delete employee number three from the employee table, everything on the projects table will also be deleted. Well, for my example, I want to say yes. So I'm going to go ahead and say, yeah, that's fine. I do. I want to do that. Now let's look at the projects table and you can see that it says, well, that person has been deleted. Let's close the project table, and now let's reopen the projects table. And when the project table is reopened, it no longer says deleted. It simply updates, because that's what cascade delete does. When you delete information on one table, it deletes the information on another table. Warning, a big warning on that one. Sometimes that's exactly what you want. In my situation here, I only want that to happen if no one else is going to be assigned those projects. Because look, the projects, they, they don't exist on my table any longer. So if that's the case, then I'm fine with deleting employee number three. But if I, oh shoot, I needed those projects, I need to assign them to someone else, they're gone. So I have to recreate the projects and then assign them to a different employee. So be very cautious about cascade delete, because sometimes you really don't want the cascade delete to be in effect. So here's what you can do. Let me go ahead and close the projects table and close the employees table. Because when you're working in the relationships window, 
any associated table should be closed, otherwise you'll get an error message saying you can't do that because the tables are currently open. So here's what people often do. They simply go in to the relationship. I'm just going to right click and choose edit relationship. They turn off the cascade delete, say okay. They would go out and do whatever they needed to do. So in my example, delete employee number three, right? And then after they deleted employee number three, they could come back in here, oh, excuse me, they could go into the projects table, update the projects table to say whatever they want the projects table to say, and then come back in, edit the relationship, and put the cascade delete back on. That's the only way that you could delete an employee, go to the projects table, update the projects to be, to assign them to someone else, and then still have referential integrity enforced because if you don't assign the project to someone else, your rule of the same field must exist in both tables, right? And then the data has to match, it wouldn't work because the data wouldn't match. You wouldn't have employee number three on the employee table. So that's one workaround to it. Some people just don't turn on cascade delete. So remember, it's 100% up to you. You don't have to have either of the cascades turned on in order to enforce referential integrity. It's 100% how you want it to work. But now you know that you can go into your relationships and you can enforce referential integrity so that you have consistency between your tables. What you have in one table exactly matches what you have in the other table. And these nice little icons here, the little infinity symbol and the little one symbol, that's how you can identify if a relationship has referential integrity enforced. Let's turn referential integrity off on this relationship. See, now I can see just by looking at the relationship window, Referential integrity has been enforced between employees and their expenses, but it has not been enforced between employees and their projects. All right, another tool to put into your tool belt, right? Now you know how you can go into relationships and enforce referential integrity and work with the cascading features that are available. The huge benefit is you can control the way the data behaves inside of your Access database. We hope you enjoyed this preview video. Please click on the like button below if you did and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Be sure to visit us at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free seven day trial today. You could learn a lot in a week.